Hello my fellow gearheads, welcome back to Bang & Gears, the YouTube channel about everything automotive. I'm Frank, and in this channel we talk about car shows and events and some do-it-yourself tutorials, which lately have a lot to do with my Ford F-150. But after three years on this channel, and just breaking 2,000 subscribers, I think we should go back to the car that started this entire channel, and that's my Cobra Replica. We're going to walk around it, talk about it, if you have any questions leave it in the comments and i'll answer as much as i possibly can but today it's all about the cobra so stick around i guess the best place to start this video is with the history of the car i'm its fourth owner it's built in 2010. It was built by somebody pretty high up at Federal Express in Memphis, Tennessee. That person sold the car to a work colleague who eventually that work colleague traded it in for a Roush Mustang at the local Ford dealership. The Ford dealership sat on it for a couple of years, used it for parades, put it in the window. Remember that, it's going to be key later on and then finally put it in a consignment shop, Gateway Classic Cars, in Louisville, Kentucky. That's where I found it on YouTube, actually. They did a walk around of the car, took it out for a drive, I liked it, I reached out, and that's where I bought the car from. I had it shipped up from Louisville, Kentucky, and the first time I physically laid eyes on the actual car is when it showed up at the house. My wife was not too happy about that. So it is a Mark III Factory 5 out of Massachusetts. It has a 302 with a Tremec 5-speed. The motor's been stroked out to a 331, and I think that's a good place to start. Let's open the hood. So it's a 1986 Ford GT motor. 302 with a 331 stroker kit. It's got the Edelbrock intake with a Holley 650 double pumper. We'll hit it from the other side as well. So I do a ton of shows, and the Cobra guys who have these, the one thing that stands out under the hood is this cowl piece right here that prevents the air from going up and around the radiator. It makes the motor compartment look a little more, a little more clean and detailed, uh, which I've, I've never seen it on any other Cobras. Um, and there's a lot of them around here, but that's the f only one I've ever seen. Cobra logo that's under the paint. It's a sticker that's underneath the paint. I didn't put it there. It was there when I bought the car. I like it. it is what it is. I know the uh, Cobra enthusiasts, the hardcore guys, are not going to like that at all, but it's there. I added the mirrors here instead of here where they should be. I did a whole video on the installation of these. If you're interested, I'll put the link up in one of the corners. You can check out that video. It's got a complete parts list of everything uh, you need to do this. And I like it, it works out great. One of the tricks I did, so they're supposed to be convex. Convex is out, I think it's convex. Concave is in, so convexed lenses. So it gives you a wide range, like a bubble. Uh, it's not that great. But what I did was I went to the auto parts store and for like two bucks, you could buy those plastic, convexed, round uh, mirrors that mount on your side mirrors on your regular car. And they got a 3M sticky back thing. And that's what I put there. You can see like the black lip. I stuck it on there and it gives it way more of a curve. And when you're sitting in it, I don't know how much you can see, but you can see with the camera, you can see all the way around the back of the car, like here. It's, it, it truly adds a whole new world uh, of being able to look around your car. I mean, everybody knows that these cars, when you're strapped in with the four-point harness system, um, you just can't, uh, you can't move around. It's like a roller coaster. You're just locked in. So all you have is your head, um, and the mirrors, the mirrors are a godsend. So 
That was my trick with the mirrors. It's got the windshades and the sunscreens. Little cup holder did not come with the car. I was up in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. I was at the Ford Nationals and uh, Shell Valley, who is another company who makes Cobra replicas. Uh, they were selling those. They were like a hundred bucks. I jumped all over it. It's great. It's got a little place for my cell phone and it's got two cup holders. See, I got the JL Audio speakers in the back and the JL Audio Marine radio up front. I also did a whole video about that as well. When I bought the car, it had a radio, super old radio. The deck actually was in the trunk and it had a remote control where that radio is on my dash and it didn't work, it didn't work at all. Uh, so I went to a local safe and sound here in Manassas, Virginia, and uh, they put in a whole stereo system with the uh, amplifier in the trunk. Um, it's phenomenal, it works great. You could also see I had them add two USB drives. So one charges my phone and the other one is for music. It's connected completely to the radio. So I'll put a link to that video about the stereo installation as well. Uh, it was called Boom Boom in the Zoom Zoom. So uh, you check that out if you're interested as well. But continuing with the interior, I did a whole video on the installation of the steering wheel. A car came with this like race car video game steering wheel, which I liked, but I really liked the old nostalgic feel and look of the original wood wheel. Um, so I did an installation video on that. Also, I'll put the link above if you're interested in watching that video. Interior wise, so these are Factory 5 Street Fighter racing seats. They didn't come like this. Again, when I had the original car, when I bought the car, they were fabric seats, they were black, and they were completely faded. They were basically purple with black lines where the seat belts hung. Uh, so I went to a local upholsterer here in town. I had just bought the car, money was a little tight. So we did leather in the front and vinyl carbon fiber looking in the back. It really cut down on the cost. He did a decorative stitch for me all the way around. And then I changed the seat belts that were also faded as well. I also had him do the gear shift knob boot and wrap the uh, chrome ring that everybody has in the leather as well. The carbon fiber theme matches my dashboard. You can see I got a carbon fiber dashboard and this is like a carbon fiber pattern as well. There's a carbon fiber door inserts um, everybody gets these from the same guy in Jersey. He's phenomenal. I can't remember his name to save my life. If you know it, leave it in the comments below. And uh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, so I went with the carbon fiber inserts. I also did the carbon fiber as my fender guards as well. But they're the original Factory 5, like I said, Street Fighter racing seats, just reupholstered. I did a video on that as well. I'll put the link above. If you're interested in watching that video, that's a good video as well. Uh, that's super old. That's like two years ago and the video quality is eh, based on the equipment I had at that time. But if you're interested, you, you can check it out. So the biggest hate I've ever gotten on this car are the double roll bars. I like the symmetry of the double roll bar. A lot of hardcore Cobra enthusiasts do not like it at all. But the only request my wife had when I bought the car that she wanted her own roll bar. So dual roll bars, I like it. It's what I was going to get anyway. And I love the way the car looks from behind with the dual roll bars. We'll go through the buttons real quick. Radiator switch. Line locks for burnouts. Headlights. High beam, low beam. Heat. There's the key kill switch for the battery. Start and stop engine is a button. That button right there is my horn. And my turn signal is a toggle switch on the far side over there. Don't be impressed by the Carol Shelby signature. It's a sticker, but th because I don't have the glove box in this car, I think it really needed something there. So. So it's a sticker. So my rear view mirror 
is mounted up top. Some models have them mounted here on the dashboard. I like it here. It brings a little normalcy to a car that's definitely not normal. It's got 427 badging. Before I get hate on this, I didn't put these on there. It came with the car. They're like JB welded on the inside. I can't get it off without really screwing it up, so it's gonna stay. Uh, but there's nothing I can do about it. Obviously, if you're a Cobra guy, you know, but for those who are not Cobra guys or girls, most of the replicas are in two types of body styles. There's a 289 and a 427. The 289 body is a little smaller, lengthwise and widthwise, and the roll bars mount backwards, where the braces on the roll bars on the 427 mount back towards the trunk. On the 289, they mount forward and through the interior of the car. So if you ever see a Cobra on the road, you can tell right away by the roll bars if it's a 289 body or a 427 body. So let's talk about wheels. Obviously, I don't have the Hillebrand wheels on this car. It came with these. These are the Factory 5 818 wheels. They're off another model car that Factory 5 makes. I like these better. I really like these way better. Um, so I know the, again, the Cobra enthusiasts are gonna chat my ass in the comments about not having the Hillebrand wheels on it. But like I said, I like these better. Uh, I also went with the lower profile tire. I think that adds a lot of, to the car as well. I, I like this style better than the other styles that everybody uses with the big fat tires and all that. And that's my car in a nutshell. Now I know everybody's gonna be pissed off if I don't take it out for a ride and you get to hear it. So we're gonna do that right now. subscribe button and that notification bell if you haven't already stay safe and we'll catch you next time on banging gears